What's up, everybody? Welcome to Meowie Hour. I'm your host, Arden Moore. And as you know, this show is brought to you every week by the Cat Fancier Association. And we're very appreciative of our sponsors, Kitty Raid, the maker of isotonic drinks to keep our kitties hydrated and carefully pronounced Meowie Wanna. It's not going to get them high. It's got organic catnip. Um, and I got to tell you, don't Casey and Rusty look a little cray cray? It's because this is the first time we've ever had a cat pajama party on Meowie Hour. <laughs> Woo! And that is because we have a triple treat. We have three amazing people who are staying up late <laughs> because they are right now in Greece. Not Greece, Ohio. I'm talking the country of Greece. And it is 1 a.m., everybody, their time. So they, too, are in pajamas. I, I have a pillow. That's about a, the best I can do. Kathy, my co-host, Kathy Black, all breed CFA judge. She got her PJs on. Cat, and, this cat's also in her pajamas. <laughs> yes. And she has our doggy designee, Destiny. But please, everybody, let's give a miyavelous welcome to the, our great people from the group called Let's Be Smart.org. And of course, I'm talking about the ringleader, Julie Kelly. Wave a paw. Hey, Julie. Hi there. And we also have <laughs> Amber Beck. And we also have Mika Marakba. Hey. Hello. What do you think of Casey's pajamas? He did this for you. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. She better pay me big time. Anyway, um, I mean, seriously, and we also have someone else to really thank. And that is our good friend, Mary Tan of uh, Media Whiskers. She seems to know everybody all over the world when it comes to doing good things for cats purebred and rescues and, uh, you know, mutt cats like Rusty the performer. So she is the one we are thanking to arrange for you three to be a special guest. You, I'm not Oprah. You don't win a car, ladies. <laughs> but you do win the award for coming from the farthest distance to be guest, special guest on our show. What do you think of that honor? Yay! <laughs> and thanks to, thanks from to Zoom, it's like they're next door, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, we had somebody from England, but you're farther, even farther. And uh, I have to tell you, just get it off the plate. Speaking of plates, I love Greek food. It's one of my Greek food and sushi. And uh, at the beginning, when we were introducing ourselves, everyone, I actually said, I really love gyros. Because I'm from Chicago, and if you said gyro, I'm going to ask Mika. Mika, you're the Greek gal in the house. Please tell us, did I say it right? It is right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I like flaming cheese, saganaki. Saganaki, yes. And, uh-oh, uh, 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 uzo. 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 You got, got it. it. <laughs> Can I be your Greek sister? <laughs> Opa! Come on! Opa! <laughs> Break a plate! Yes. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So um, they're here to talk about this great organization. It's called Let's Be Smart.org. And oh my gosh, it has so many facets to it. They have a whole education component. There's videos. They reach out to kids. We're going to talk about that. They have a global, global volunteer program. And they also have a program for veterinarians internship program. And we're gonna dive all into that. But uh, first, as you know, I always do an opening dialogue. So do you guys, uh, in Greece, do you guys know what the bobbleheads are? Dung, dung, dung. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So, usually a sport yeah, they figure. On like a car and they move. Yeah, the, the head is exaggerated and it boings. Right. <laughs> Mika's like, who is this crazy lady? Well, <laughs> um, who is this American lady? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to report that bobbleheads are not only, hang on, don't say it yet. Oh, dang it. Bobbleheads are not only for sports athletes. 
They just came out with a bobblehead for the new cat in the White House, Willow. What do you guys think? Oh, that's so, so cute. Very cute. <laughs> very cute. <laughs> I mean, the cat. We're just, all nodding our heads, yes. <laughs> yeah, everybody do this. This is how you do an affirmation for a bobblehead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's great because it's another shining example of cats getting a positive or positive spotlight. So there's a group out there that make these bobbleheads. I, I, I want to work for them. It's called the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum. And they just released this, this note that Willow now has her own bobblehead. I'll go ahead and <laughs> click off the thing for a second, uh, Kathy. Um, and then have you, have you, did you hear about the cat being in the White House, uh, Julie, uh, Mika, and Amber? Did you hear about there's a cat now in the White House? I did, because I see it on my feeds on oh, Facebook or whatever. Amber, yes. you know there's a cat now prowling the White House? I know about it from no. Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Mika. Yeah? All right. Well, here's the deal. This is kind of one of those, have you ever had this situation? Back during the elections, apparently First Lady Jill Biden and President Biden were at a farmhouse giving a talk, a speech in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and this cat went flying through, disrupted everything, and locked yes. eyes with Jill Biden. And Jill yes. Biden felt this feeling that we all get sometimes when we get a kitten that we know is our heart cat. And she said, I want to adopt that cat. Mm -hmm. And Someone cared for the kitty for the past year, and now the kitty is ready and is now with the Bidens. Now, I'm not talking politics. I'm non-partisan, but it is a happy <laughs> tale <laughs> for everyone. So I wanted to ask your thoughts on that, uh, Julie. What do you think about that? She saw this cat, and they connected, and she was patient, and the time was right, and she was able to bring the kitty into the White House. Those are the kind I of things all right? the animals have some connection. Yeah, I think they find you. They're like little angels and they just find you and you're not looking. And so, yeah, I'm sure that's what happened. And that's amazing. It uh, gets to live in a great, uh, ha big house. <laughs> I'm just wondering so, how many litter boxes Lots of, I'm are. sure, fresh food. <laughs> Yeah, 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 probably, yeah, probably like a whole uh, room of a litter house room <laughs> yeah, with pretty scents and uh, fresh food. <laughs> well, they said they gave the kitty the name Willow because Dr. Jill Biden's hometown is Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, we had a Willow too, a cat named Willow. <laughs> oh, cool. And they said that Willow is a DS. Domestic DSH, domestic short hair with, oh, ready for it? Jade green eyes. Wow. Not, not just green eyes. We're talking jade green eyes. Well, there were several people saying that she was gray and white, which yeah. she's not. She's a blue tabby. Uh, but like we've talked about in previous episodes, if you're in a goody tabby, you will have a white muzzle and a white chin. And she's obviously a, an agouti tabby because she's got that white muzzle and white chin, but she's not a gray and white domestic short hair. She's a blue tabby. <laughs> and Adamata was we very pleased. Genius in the house. <laughs> yes. I was also very pleased that they did some um, training with their current dog. You know, one of the dogs bit Joe Biden and they had to rehome that dog, but they did some cat training to make sure that their current dog was not going to be terrorizing Willow across the <laughs> White House grounds. And evidently he passed his test and that's when they brought her in. So hopefully that's they're both living good. harmoniously. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, so we're, what we, I just wanted to share that with everybody and uh, wanted to cross international date lines to tell our trio from Greece that big news. Uh, move over, David Muir. We have Arden Moore on Meowie Hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we do have a couple, a lot of things we want to announce. Uh, Kathy, you said there is a great trap neuter release program being by the Community Cat Podcast coming up, right? Yes, I got an email. Um, are you going to do the trivia question after this? Or before yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Yeah, I did get an email from the Community Cat Podcast, and there is a seminar that's happening this Saturday from 2 to 4 Eastern Time, and it is a Trap Neuter Release Certification Workshop. So if you're interested in finding out how to do Trap Neuter and Release in your neighborhood, go to the Community Cat Podcast website, and I'm sure you can find information for it there. Uh, I get emails from them on a regular basis because I signed up for their emails. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. If if you're interested in learning how to do that and get certified for that, it's 2 o'clock to 4.30 Eastern (laughs) Time this Saturday. All right. We give a shout out to the organizer, Stacey LeBaron. Okay. Before we launch into our land of Greece and Euros, um, I want to just announce who, what, what was the winner, who, who won, and what was the winning answer to last week's trivia contest? My, uh, my question was, um, which generation latest, has spent the most money? Okay. <laughs> in the latest Catster magazine, they did a survey of 1,400 pet owners in the United States. I'm sorry, they forgot Greece. <laughs> um, but of the four generations, we have uh, Generation Z, Millennials, Generation X, and Baby Boomers. Which generation, on average, spends more money on pets? And I'm, I, and it is Generation Z. So the winner is going to get a pack of the Kitty Raid, Doggy Raid, and Yummy Raid. Thank you, sponsors. So who who won? Uh, Rusty's checking them out. Make sure they're 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 legit. Are they legit, Case? Rusty? Yeah, I we we had a lot of incorrect guesses. Okay, I actually, I only had three people guess correctly. So you stumped a lot of people with that question, Arden. And Kelly Barkley was the randomly chosen winner of the Kitty Raid Isotonic Drink. So congratulations to Kelly Barkley. All right, good job, good job. All right, here's tonight's trivia question. Wait, wait, I- wait. Oh, sorry. We had two other winners. Oh, that's right. We had our author, Sandy Robbins. Sorry, my bad. Go yeah. ahead. So, so Sandy gave away two of her books. Uh, one book was on the, the question was, what was the name of the cat that got the litter stuck on his paws, the hairy paws? And, and, that, and that winner was Minoka Lakin. So okay. Minoka's getting the book um, Fabulous Felines. And then the other question was, what was the name of the cat that's been sitting in Parliament? And that was Jacques. And a lot of people misspelled it, but I knew what they were saying. And uh, the winner of that book, which is Buffy the Cat Chronicles, was Pam Webster. So Pam Webster, Manoka, Lakin, your books have been mailed. I have the tracking numbers if you're interested, but you should get them soon. And Kelly Barkley wins the acetonic drink from our sponsor, Kitty Raid. And this week, we're going to have two different sponsors. We have Kitty Raid and Meowy Wana. So I'll pick two winners from Arden's question. And shoot, give us the question, Arden. Okay. In honor of Willow being the first cat in the White House, not the very first, but known as the first cat, what's the name of the last cat? who was roaming around the White House. And it wasn't the last administration. It's been a bit of time. So what was the name of the cat, the last cat to occupy the White House? If you uh, don't say it, Julie. Julie. (laughs) I don't know the name, but I know the president. (laughs) Oh, that's good, that's good. But don't say it, don't show your face. face. Was the last cat in the White House named Socks? That's A. Was the last cat in the White House named India? That's B. Was the last cat in the White House named Misty Malarkey? And D, was the last cat in the White House named Slippers? So again, your choices, Socks, India, Misty Malarkey, or Slippers. Destiny knows, Destiny knows. (laughs) And the winner is gonna get, there's two winners. And one's going to get a three pack of the Kitty Raid products, and one's going to get uh, something similar to like this. Uh, uh, this is like a slice of cheese, and you can put organic uh, Meow Iwana catnip in it, and the kitties go bonkers. So we thank our two sponsors, and uh, that's that's the deal with the trivia. Come on up. 
Casey and Rusty are really trying to get my uh, chicken. All right. All the way from Greece. I think sort of near Athens. Am I right or not? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Kate, Rusty's trying to take my chicken, which I have over here, so I have to hide it. Um, there is an amazing group, everyone, that's causing international waves in a good way, and they're saving the lives of cats. And they have this three-story villa, and the kitties are there, and these kitties are adopted to places all over the world. I'm talking about let's be smart.org. And we have with us uh, the founder, and that is Julie Kelly. And she's got her friends, the teammates, Amber and Mika. But Julie, let's be smart.org. What does the SMART stand for? Stands for Successfully Managing Animal Rights Today. I like it. I'm glad you were, didn't do some acronym with dummy. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah I tried to be polite about smart so not making people feel that they're not smart but let's be smart let's become smarter smart you know let's learn to be smart so well this I, is like I, an I, international wealth animal welfare group and it folks non-profit I want to get that out there and you do not have a Greek accent no, I don't, but I can pretend to have one. <laughs> I joke around when I need to. So you, are you from New York? <laughs> yes, I can. I can speak Greek. Okay. What's that? Are you from, what, what part of the United States are you from? Are you from the, uh, New York? Or I was born in New Jersey. I've okay. lived in, in, what's that? No, New Jersey. I was born Jersey. in New Jersey. <laughs> So what? Jersey girl. Jersey. How did this Jersey girl get in a cat group? And you're in Greece right now, and it's <laughs> one a.m. and you all are wearing pajamas. You are the cat pajamas. So I love that. I love that. So how did you get from Jersey to Greece? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> more. I met um, some Greeks through business, actually. And once you're in with the Greeks, you're in with the Greeks and the Greek family, like my big fat Greek wedding, <laughs> you're kind of all there. So okay. I started going to Greece uh, since 1998 uh, wow. and I would go every year. And I just became more comfortable because I also had a Greek business partner for 10 years. So I just felt very comfortable. I, le I was learning the language, listening to Greek music and... Every time I would come, I, I saw so many stray animals, which, you know, it's a little bit different than in America. Of course, we have stray animals, but they don't really have shelters specifically here. So you see more stray animals. And I just, I said, I just said, one day I'm going to live here and I'm going to save the animals. And I was on the airplane, Olympic Airways, which doesn't work anymore, but it used to go from Athens to New York. And I was thinking, because I liked, I mean, I like to come up with company names. So I was sitting in the airplane and I, I said, I need something smart. We need to educate so they understand how great the animals are and all the benefits they offer to we humans. And um, I wanted to work with children and uh, just in, in a sense, more education, not really, I didn't have the vision of the shelter at that time. So I, I was sitting there and I had S-M-A-R and I had successfully managing animal rights and I couldn't think what the T would be. And when I got back to New York, I was with my girlfriend uh -huh. and her husband and I was telling her out in the living room and I, and then he yells from the kitchen today. <laughs> and that's how, that's wow. how it worked out. It takes a yeah. village. It's almost like it would be a wordle word. You know, that's the new hot thing. Five letters. So smart. Yeah. That might be the next wordle word for all you guys. <laughs> that there. Well, that's kind of cool. Now I see to the left and right of you, you have two great folks. So I want them to be able to introduce themselves too properly. Amber um, Beck, you are not from Jersey. Where are you from? I'm not. I'm from England. <laughs> <laughs> what part? Yorkshire. Okay, Yorkshire. So yeah. how did a Yorkshire gal get to Athens, to Greece? 
Uh, so I've been here for a year and a half now. And before that, I was always studying animals and working with animals in England. So like yourself, I was very interested in behavior. So I have a master's degree in animal behavior and welfare. Wow. So I always knew that I wanted to work with animals and I felt like Greece needed my help more than the animals in England did. So I reached out to Let's Be Smart and obviously managed to get the job over here. And then since being here, it's just been like a dream come true. Obviously, there's a lot of heartbreak and it can be quite difficult with the amount of strays, but it's really rewarding to be able to help them. Um, so, yeah, I think that's wonderful. And we have the one native gal here um, from Greece, and uh, she's going to have fun with me. I think I already bonded because I said, you come on. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you had me at Euros. You had me at Euros. But Mika, tell us a little bit about how you got into animal welfare and, and where are you from in Greece? Well, I'm half Greek, half Swedish, actually. But okay. I was born and raised here in Greece. Okay. Um, my mom was working as a veteran as I grew up all the years. So I was always around animals and we, we always had animals in the house. So I was into that, yeah, yeah. since I grew up. Yeah. Um, I started working at the vet clinic to gain experience and knowledge. And that's how I met Julie. Oh, yeah? Years, We're years, all years, the time. yes, years ago. <laughs> Bringing in the point. Yes, I stopped from the clinic and came to Let's Be Smart. All right. So... Tell us a little bit, and I don't know, I don't want to disrupt your technology because you, you guys are on a whole different time zone and everything. And here in Texas, where I'm talking to you, we're having a sleet storm. I can see it. So I'm hoping the show makes it through the end. But uh, just in case, you have a three-story villa. And tell us a little bit, and if you want to show us a little, if it's safe to pick up the computer, take it away, Julie. Yeah, so... And all these um, guys in the background. Hi, everybody. You're on TV. Woo! <laughs> <Bumpa>! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so th th we've been in this location for about a little over four years, I believe. I, I um, started, again, as I said, I didn't necessarily think I was going to have a shelter, but it just kind of works out where the pregnant cat having three her third round of kittens I just yeah. couldn't take anymore and I let her have them at the vet's office and then I rented an apartment originally just for her and her kittens and then of <laughs> course they came they came they came and the, there were like 25 cats in the, in the apartment which was kept clean that's our thing too right. but then I had the opportunity for this uh, villa because there used to be a lady that had dogs here as well. Um, oh, okay. And we took the upper part first, but then she moved out. She got some land and opened up, uh, moved her shelter. So we took over the whole house. Wow. And um, so we've just really been working for four years on decorating it. We have it really well, you know, nice. Well, I see in the background, you've got like floor to ceiling uh, towers and climbing. I mean, you yes. are thinking like a cat there. Yeah, it's it's for cats first, people second. In fact, all our <laughs> most of our furniture, like in the living room, is outdoor furniture because <laughs> it's very durable yeah. and the cats can't scratch it. And it looks brand new still. So well, I, I really hope you um, actually have a toilets for your two-leggers and not litter boxes. <laughs> yeah, that we have. <laughs> they do get a human bathroom. Okay, that's good. All the, all the better, it's set up, it's a house. So we have how many, one, two, six bedrooms. Um, and the volunteers stay in the bedrooms and a lot of the cats we have could be isolated for different reasons, whether they're healing, they're new, they're too young, they are waiting for their quarantine period for vaccines. So they're usually sleeping, the volunteers are usually sleeping with cats. Oh, that's <laughs> so nice. That's not a bad uh, a job hazard. I, I would take that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know, we've tried to 
create a nice environment. We we have huge balconies, which I don't, well, you might be able to see if the lights are on. Yeah, the lights are yeah. on. Yeah. We'll be able to show you. All right, and, we're, gonna, um, we're gonna give it a try, everybody. Pause, cross, kind of give a little scan. All right, Amber's gonna be our videographer. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's be smart, ladies. <laughs> we're gonna try, here we go. All right. Casey's interested, he's watching. He says, I'm looking for a Greek lady kitty. <laughs> oh, yeah, that looks nice. You know what? I'm very impressed by that. That gives them a lot of places off the ground, a lot of hidey holes, a lot of ways to survey. Oh, I, mean, I they, love those beds in the town. They have bunk beds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do they play um, kitty foosball? I see you've got a foosball table. Y yeah, for people and cats. <laughs> <laughs> the cats like to play too. We have a couple videos with them playing uh, foosball. That's cute. And, That's cute. Okay. And then and this is the area where the volunteers can also come and watch TV. Everybody can cook together, hang out, sit with the cats. Usually there, there's cats sleeping yeah. <laughs> along with everybody. Nice. That, that cat looks like Rusty. Yeah. That yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely <laughs> sleeping time at that time of yeah. morning. All right. Um, and, and how far is this from the uh, Athens airport? 10 minutes. Very, very oh. convenient, actually. So, so this where, that you yeah. can fly in and fly over to our place. <laughs> well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. These kitties are up for adoption. And I was checking out uh, some of their names. You can get a kitty from Greece from Kitty Picker. What is Kitty Picker? Kitty Picker is a program that actually one of our volunteers wrote that is a database of all our cats and all their different features and ages. And um, you can go on and kind of pick, pick different categories of the cat you might want, and then it will come up with some selections. So, so give me a walk me through because I was looking at some of the names. There was a theme going on with a few of them. Espresso, cappuccino, mocha, latte. <laughs> yes, the, the the coffee kittens. That's because we we rescued them from my favorite cafe where I live called Savalas uh, Cafe. Mm -hmm. And um, sorry, it's cold. <laughs> We're outside in our pajamas. <laughs> so that balcony <laughs> looks like it's open. Like, can they can they can't come and go from there? Can they? What's that? The balcony looks like it was balcony? open. Yeah. Well, we have the upstairs too, and we have the bedrooms, but it might be a little harder to see. <laughs> but can oh, they, but I think, are they able to get out of the villa by jumping through the balcony, or is that protected? No, we have all complete netted. Um, the whole, it's two floors too. We have two stories worth of huge balconies, and the bedrooms upstairs on the second floor, we put partitions in between each. Um, each area. So each bedroom has a private netted balcony and the bedroom so they can go in and out. Okay. okay. Well, I noticed that um, you have you have some cats that are pairs, you know, they, they have to be adopted together. Yes. And you also have some that are handicapped. I think uh, Silva and Vincent. So yes, walk us through. Somebody here is on Meowy Hour right now watching our show. What can they do? What steps do they need to take to maybe adopt a coffee cat, a handicapped cat, or a matching pair? Um, well, they can they can see them on the website under the under our adoption page, and then they would um, fill out an adoption application. Okay. And once they fill out the adoption application, they would um, be referred to our adoption manager. She couldn't be here. She's in England. She delivered some cats actually for adoption. <laughs> Let's do a shout out. Who is that? Let's shout out on Meow Hour. Who, who are we? Ellie for Ellie. <laughs> Ellie, nice job, Ellie. Nice job, Ellie. All right. So how do you get a cat from Greece to um, the United States? Fly them. Uh, like oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, swim across the ocean. But do I'm you actually, have groups that volunteer to help transport, or how how does that happen? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes we have um, actually uh, a second cat maybe transported by our first 
for a 2022 vet intern that's coming from Minnesota. And she might be taking it back with her to Minnesota because the cat is to go is being adopted in Portland. Okay, all right. So it's closer than me bringing it. So I'm bringing the one I'm bringing is actually staying in New York. Okay. So I'm bringing Simi, the Siamese cat that we was uh, given to us that someone found with a broken leg. Oh, so name some of the countries um, that these cats have won homes from besides the United States? Everywhere. They're all throughout Europe. Yeah. Um, a lot go to England, a lot go to the United States, obviously. We have a lot in the Netherlands. Nice. As well, because of the Global Volunteer Program, we have volunteers from all over the world, and a lot of them end up either adopting the cat or spreading the word to their family and friends. So I would say we've probably ticked off most, if not all, European countries um so, so yeah can, definitely so you can have people become global volunteers not necessarily just adopting so whoever wants to jump in with this answer how could somebody become a global volunteer for let's be smart.org well, here. <laughs> <laughs> take take my seat for a little bit <laughs> who is this uh charlotte hi charlotte i'm arden this is Casey Cat Casey wearing cat pajamas for you guys tonight. Oh, cute! But that's in. All right. So, how does somebody become a global volunteer for Let's uh, so How we found this place was on a website called Workaway, mm -hmm. and we wanted um, an animal sanctuary, an animal sanctuary to volunteer at, and this place came up in Greece. So we were like, "What an amazing opportunity!" And we got in touch with them, and then. We organize to come here for a few weeks. Um, so yeah, it's easy really. You just get in touch with them on work away. What do you think of this villa? Oh, we love it. Um, I was blown away by the house before we even got inside. But um, we keep it clean every day and um, the house is just huge. And you just lose track of all the cats because there's so many around. <laughs> well, that sounds good. So we've got the Global Volunteer Program we talked about. You also, though, are helping veterinarians, interns, get more practical hands-on experience in animal welfare. You want to talk about that a little bit, uh, Julie? Uh, sure, Mika can tell you. Mika, Mika actually does the program when the vet interns come because she's <laughs> actually almost a vet nurse and has yeah. a lot of experience and she collaborates with a lot of the veterinarians here. And uh, obviously a lot of them speak Greek, so she's, uh, and she knows them from, her experience, so she can tell you. <laughs> oh, take it away, Nika. We started the program last year. Oh, good. It was launched last summer. And we collaborate with uh, veterinarians and dog shelters, so they can see how dog shelters are in Greece as well and get an experience of that. Good. Um, we also collaborate with, um, like, holistic, what do you say? Yeah, you did it. You did English, it. but my English is not very good. Hey, it, it was Greek to me, and you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> with different, with other experts from the field of animal welfare, so good. they can get the whole view. You know what? I think having international experience is a, is a, is great. Don't you think? It's amazing because they see operations and clinical examinations. Sometimes it's not it's not always the same in different countries. So yeah. that can operate in some way, and they see how we do here in Greece. Okay. They participate in operations, they help the veterinarians. So it's it's very beneficial. I love it. I love it. Great. <laughs> well, you know, this I know it's called Let's Be Smart, but your organization is Let's Keep Growing because <laughs> talk a little bit about you're reaching a young generation. I saw some cool videos on the Let's Be Smart.org site. Julie, talk about what you're doing to help the next generation be great cat advocates. So we created uh, animated an animated video series. Um, we have six at this point. We're, we're in the process of writing number seven, which is also going to correspond with the Trap King coming. <laughs> so oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that next, but go ahead. Go ahead. And, yeah, and so we created the Smart Family. <laughs> And of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> so 
we focused on first, our first video sort of introduces the boy George, which talks about the children being superheroes because they feed the strays, they walk the, you know, their dog, they pick up the poop, <laughs> they build a little house for the, you know, their pet with their dad in the winter to keep it warm. And we just kind of introduce the kid. And then the first, the first video then introduces the family and they have this idea that they want to go buy a pet, but we have superheroes that advise the family and explain probably why it's not the best idea to buy a pet and what can happen and then why they should go to the local shelter. So the family goes to the shelter, they find a cat that they want to adopt, a Snowball, who actually was a cat we had, <laughs> okay. lives in Germany now. All right. Um, and it kind of takes them through the story of the smart family. What do you do next? Once you get your pet, you how to care for it, get it, fit, get it vaccinated, sterilized. Um, we have about keeping the house clean, the pet, the pets safe, the children safe and the family so that the parents don't have to worry or they think they're dirty because yeah. in a different culture, the animals are thought in a little bit different way. So we wanted to really show that it's it can be safe you yeah. know for all everyone and then um our latest one actually number six is very interesting because we've also um shown our videos and worked with refugee children here as well as oh. children because my girlfriend runs an organization here for the refugees so we've shown them the videos we have uh four of them translated in arabic so they watched them in Arabic. And um, um, so it inspired us to write our number six video, which not only covers about the benefits of the animals to autistic children, but also for PTSD, which also could be the families of the refugees, you know, because they come with obviously have a lot of. Yeah. Well, we know us. that pets are good for our health. I mean, they yeah, exactly. are good healing. Exactly. So, and I can't, I, I just can't believe you're just one person in a group of people doing all that you're doing. Do you guys <laughs> ever take a cat nap? <laughs> Not really. <No. laughs> I'm on the Greek. Greek oh, coffee. Yeah, that's I dedication. Good coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I love good Greek coffee. Yeah. I can't, I want to get over there. I'm going to try to get some that, that come to you. You have to come. You have to come. Yes. You have to come. And so, the best thing, the best news about our video series that we were working very hard for probably one year with Mika helping, we just got them approved with the whole Ministry of Education in Greece, so we can show them to all the schools in Greece, basically. So, oh, how exciting! Tomorrow, oh, that is a major accomplishment. Oh my gosh! Casey stood up on that news. He's like, <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> so now, we do have uh, another American connection, and we have a good friend, two good friends at Meowie Hour, and that they are, of course, again, Mary Tan from uh, Whisker Media, who does many things, and our buddy, Sterling Trap King Davis, who's been on our show, and who my cat, Rusty, knew as an orphan kitty when he was staying at Samantha Martin's house with the amazing Acro Cats. So I understand Mary and Sterling are coming to your place. Yes. Tell us about that. That's cool. So it all started, we saw an article on Sterling um, talking about how he was trying to change stereotypes um, and we sort of resonated with it a little bit obviously with Julie being American coming into Greece and maybe trying to change the Greek stereotypes a little bit so we felt a little connection already so I just reached out to them and just praised him for his work really said that we were really inspired by everything that he stood for and as always invited them to the shelter so they could sort of get the picture for how it is here in That's Greece and yeah, well, within yeah we, we got to do something as a repeat when you get some video or something let's do something to show people what the trip was all about how's that Yes, definitely. So we're going to try and film most of his stay here. So he's here for 10 days in total. Nice guy. He's a nice guy. What, what's that website? You have a rhyming website because, you know, he rhymes. Uh, what is the website people should start checking out when it's ready? Raptotrap.com is a website we uh, have 
created just for his his time here in Greece. So okay. we introduced Let's Be Smart, the Trap King, the Trap King comes to Greece, and then we have a schedule uh, for the different events and the days and what we're going to be doing. And then we'll also let people know, like, if there's volunteers, they want to get involved, wh which days they can get involved. Like, we're doing certain trappings in different areas of Athens. We're going to the island of Idra. Wow. Um, for two days, we're going to do trappings there. We're also going to have Sterling and us. Uh, we're all going to show the videos and talk to the children in the school. There's a school we'll be uh, speaking with. Oh, they're going to love him. He's awesome. He's fun. Yeah, he's amazing. I got to meet him. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I know, yes, I know that um, we've talked about how people can be volunteers. We've talked about how you can adopt. We've talked about how you have veterinary interns. What are some ways that people may also help you out either with donations, monetary, or otherwise? Can you talk a little bit about your charity shop? Uh, yeah. I love that logo, too. That's great. Oh, thank you. That That's looks like an Einstein <laughs> cat. That's a smart-looking cat. <laughs> Um, so our Etsy site has a lot of uh, products that actually our volunteers even help us make. We make cat toys and we've had some volunteers that sewed that help us helped us make cat beds and purses and um, which so is do you that? sell your t-shirts? Artwork, artwork. Do you um, sell your t-shirts? What's that? You sell those t-shirts. Uh, well, these we made for this event, but we do oh. have t-shirts. <laughs> Wow, we're, we're, honored. we're honored. We're honored. That's very, they're very nice. <laughs> we created them so they would look like pajamas. <laughs> we have zip up hoodies. We have some t shirts. We have some summer sleeveless shirts for the girls. Um, so, uh, mugs. We have artwork. Um, we've, we have an artist from England that also does artwork, and she, um, we've sponsored some of hers, um, some, some of our own. Volunteers have done artwork. Nice. Um, one nice. lady from uh, the Netherlands, Ina. We have Rose uh, uh, that did um, some nice art as well from America. Oh yes, yes, mm -hmm. from America. So we have a collection, but a lot of it was handmade. Also at our shelter, especially all the toys and all, we sew them and create them to try to raise money because obviously it's. Yeah. Uh, to keep everything up, it's a lot. And we have vet bills. We have our programs. We're doing our videos. So we're trying to come up with some programs where companies could sponsor a certain video and their company name could be, will be shown, let's say, in the beginning of the video and at the end of the video. Maybe it will pertain to the type of video, like the cleaning, you know, eco-friendly cleaning supplies. Maybe a company wants yeah. to be on that video. So well, we're... I, that's why I'm glad you're here because we actually have a global audience on Meowie Hour, right, Kathy? What are some of the places people are? And if you're from a different country right now, type in where you're coming from. What What are some of the places, Kathy? Well, the, one of the winners I chose last week was in Singapore, and I told her, "I'm sorry, we're not shipping from our <laughs> from our sponsors to Singapore." But but uh, yeah, we've had people from uh, Israel and Singapore and and uh, Malaysia. So in, in England, and so we're excited to be branching out a little bit, but we've got a lot of people here in America that like to sponsor good, uh, you know, support lots of companies that are doing good by cats and dogs. So I think we'll have some of our followers here in America help yeah. you out by checking out your shop and supporting you because you guys are doing a great job over there and, and all around the world. And the nice thing is this is on Facebook Live for the Cat Fancier Association. I posted on my Arden Moore Facebook. I have actually more than three followers. I'm just kidding. And <laughs> then do the YouTube. So anybody out there that does CFA Meowie Hour YouTube, you're going to always have the links to these shows. And we want to keep people in the eye of people. So we, you will get that link, um, ladies, so that we hope that we can do a small part to help out uh, Let's Be Smart and the cool cats that you have here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So I'm really dying to ask, uh, Mika, Mika, hmm, yes. how do I say I love you to my boy Casey in Greek? Savapo. Savapo. 
Yes, you're good. You're very good. I'm terrible at Spanish. I sound Italian. But I'm, <laughs> I'm learning Spanish. <laughs> and very my good boss says, you sound Italian. But there's something, I think Julie captured it. When you feel Greek, I'm talking about, I, my favorite restaurant is closed now. It was in Chicago. It was called the Parthenon. And they would welcome you and you'd look up in the ceiling and it was burnt from the Saganaki flaming cheese. <laughs> you know? And and I love euros. I, I'm not a big fan of grape leaves, I gotta tell you. But I always finished, I had to split a baklava because my teeth would scream. Oh yeah, baklava is so sweet. <laughs> it it's so always sweet. represents something special. And for you, Mika, I know you're half Greek, half British, but what is it about the energy you feel when you're there? What? The, the energy, energy you feel about being... What is it about why Greeks are so great? Why do Greeks rock? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 that's difficult because I have, I feel half Swedish from my mom. So right. I have both these sides. Um, I love the weather here. Okay, that's good. And, and and Julie said the people are very kind, right? Yes, they're very, they like to be welcoming and to get your attention and uh, <laughs> uh, loud. loud, they're yeah. loud. Yeah, they they're like bold and loud. Party yeah. And have their music day. very late. Uh, you yeah. know, the Greeks like to go out at 12 o'clock and party till yeah. six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you um, have a lot of energy. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, everybody, we're speaking with uh, Julie, Amber, and Mika from letsbesmart.org. They are actually in pajamas. Yes, it's 1 a.m., almost 2, in Greece. And I can't believe they said yes when I put the call out for them to be guests on the Aoi Hour. We want you all to stick around because this, this hour goes by really fast. What's up next, everybody, is Kathy's going to do a little presentation on the breed, the American wire hair while I go off screen to get ready to make a mock tail. I am a licensed bartender. One show a month, I do a non-alcoholic drink. And the one I'm gonna be making for you tonight is called the No Yolk Perfect Mocktail. So I'll be back on the screen a little bit. Ladies, stay here, learn a little bit about the American wire hair from one of the most talented all-breed CFA judges on the planet, Kathy Black. Oh, aren't you sweet? Thank you. Yeah, we've had a lot of our followers have to get off the air tonight because major portions of the United States is getting hit by ice storms tonight. Um, I, they keep saying mine's switched over to snow, but I think it's still ice. So we've got a lot of our regular followers are not able to keep up with us tonight because probably their power is going out. But anyway, let's talk about the American wire hair. So uh, here in North America, we have our domestic short hair cat we call the American short hair. And there was a mutation that happened in some barn cats where all the hairs twisted and kinked. And so you can really see that in this picture. Um, so it came from a litter of kittens born in New York in 1966. And then this breed was accepted by CFA in 1967, uh, and sorry, recognized in 1967 and eligible for competition in 1978. It's a dominant mutation. Approximately half the kittens at birth will end up being wired. The others will just have straight hair. And the most apparent wiring is in the whisker area when they're kittens but the entire coat will also be wired. Uh, if the coat appears to be in ringlets, then the coat's too long. Uh, we don't wanna see waves in it, uh, but if it does have some waves, sometimes it'll straighten out when the cat gets a little older. And those that are lightly wired will continue to crimp uh, throughout their life. And so that you want a, a, a coat that's coarse, but that of course depends on a lot on the color and uh, of course on the parents also. White areas of the cat are always the softest fur. So when you have a wire hair that has a lot of white on it, it's not gonna, you're not gonna see as much wiring or feel the coarseness to the coat as you do 
in the other colored areas of the cat. And it seems like most of the time we do see these cats in the bicolor pattern, so they usually have some white somewhere on them. Here's a, a young kitten. Oops. Um, and and you can it's hard to see in some of these pictures the wiring. Um, but what's always funny is it, with all the Rex breed and with our wire hair breed, uh, the whiskers are always going crazy. I mean, on the Rex breed, their whiskers tend to break off. On the Cornish Rex, the Devon Rex, the Selkirk Rex, and the wire hair, the whiskers are always, they try to twist and, and curl also. So the whiskers go every direction. Um, but when you feel this coat, it feels like a Brillo pad. Um, it really does have that twisty, kinky feel to it. And the standard says that the hairs are even twisted and kinked in the ears and between the toes. So I can't imagine how uncomfortable that must be <laughs> for the cat, but I guess they grow up with it so they're used to it. But you can really see the, the, the coat, that they're all, the ends of the hairs are bent and twisted and going different directions. And um, you can really see it on this cat here. You can see it, especially on the back how those hairs, every one of them twist and kink different directions. Um, and like I said, on the whites, it's hard to get that real uh, coarse, hard coat because white hairs are softer, but these really look, these two right here really look like they've got a nice cut to them. Uh, as with all the cats, they're gonna shed at different times. So the amount of kinking and twisting on these hairs is gonna change throughout the different seasons, but they, they stay this way their whole life. And they really are a really interesting breed of cat. So that's a little bit about the American wire hair breed. And did you girls have any questions about that? Have you have you ever seen one or felt one? I've never seen one before. No, no, no. They're yeah. pretty. They're pretty rare, so you probably will not see them. Uh, even in the show halls, I I don't see. There are small pockets of breeders that. So if I'm in an area where there's a breeder, I'll end up seeing an American wire hair, but there's not too many breeders that are working with that breed. But it is, a, I always said I'd, I'd have a hard time uh, having an American wire hair because they would pick up every dust bunny in my house. And so they're, they're like a built-in Swiffer, you know, that goes around and picks up all the dirt in your house. So <laughs> they, they do have to Pay attention to them like in hotel rooms and things like that. You're not going to let that cat get under the bed with, in, a, in a dirty hotel room because all every piece of dirt will stick to that coat and it's hard to get it out of there. But um, it is an interesting breed and they and uh, and they're very similar to our uh, American Shorthair breed in temperament, size, and personality. But that hair really sets them apart and there's a lot of points on that coat. So that's the American wire hair. Arden, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Um, so that's what I like about the show. You never know what you're gonna learn in, in besides my really bad jokes. But um, <laughs> what we have to wrap up and you ladies stay, stick around. There is one nice thing I love that about the CFA and that is they recognize all cats, not just the purebreds, but all cats. They have a household cat division and tell us Kathy about CCW and Casey and Rusty are proud card carrying members of the CCW. Yeah, they're so <laughs> it stands for Companion Cat World, and it's a program that, that I started um, along with a couple other ladies a couple years ago. And it's just a way of recognizing our non pedigree cats as well. So when you upload your picture and you pay your $13 fee, each cat gets their own card with their name on it, their owner's name. This would be a really cool benefit for you ladies with your new owners. Yeah. And 10% yeah. uh, and of that $13 goes to a local shelter. So it helps support them. We can even set that up for you. If you yeah, want wouldn't to that be with nice? any registrations out of your cool. program. And, and, uh, and then there's also other things like <laughs> luggage cards and key rings and all that stuff. You can find out all the information about this on our CFA website, cfa.org slash CCW. That stands for Companion Cat World. And there's a gallery of all the cats that have been registered. You can search by 
state or country or name. Um, so check that out. And we'd love to work with you ladies on a program if you wanted yeah, to do something amazing. Else. all the cats that you've placed because it's a really cool program and I'm really yeah, proud of it. It gives it international cred. It would be great. We would love that. Yeah. Hey, um, before I make my cocktail, I'm, I wear a lot of collars in the cat world and dog world, and I am a master instructor in pet first aid and CPR. And you're looking at the most active cat, I say, in the world, teaching veterinary approved cat and dog first aid. But for all you out there in Meow Hour land, we do have our next class. It is through Zoom. It is live, interactive. And Rusty is also in the mix. He's our, he's our cat in training. And my company is called Pet First Aid For You. And the cost is $40. You get a course book, three hours of training. And being the opportunity to have your cat in your own place with you as we go through some of the hands-on. Uh, ladies, what do you think of my stellar teaching uh, uh, four-leggers? They're the perfect models. I don't think any of our cats are that well behaved. <laughs> well, he's my BFF. He's my best feline friend. And he and I kind of finish each other's sentences, Casey and I. So I hope you guys will consider um, telling others about the class. We've had a number of people from Meowie Hour that have taken the class, including my co-host, Kathy. Um, what I do as a gift for my guests, though, and I know you're in Greece, <laughs> but thank gosh for Zoom. Um, just like I'm doing with the Biddy Kitty Brigade, uh, they have 10 volunteers. And on March 1st, I am teaching them a private three-hour cat first aid class for free. So you all talk amongst yourselves. And if you can arrange, I don't want a big crowd, but uh, I would love to donate my knowledge with Casey and maybe if Rusty shows up and we could figure out a time and do a three-hour cat class to you as a gift for you being on our Meowie Hour show. That's amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so great. much. You. And I would probably say you more than once. And doctors. And the doctors, yeah. 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 So if you can tell them and then um, it's something I want to give back because only 2% of Americans even take a pet first aid class. And if we can be there and, and when injuries occur on the scene, and stabilize and safely get them to the vet, we might save their lives. Mm -hmm. It's very great. important. Power to the pole! <laughs> All <laughs> right, I'm going to switch gears. Uh, as we do, we always create a kitty cocktail, and this one is a mocktail, and it is being called, I created it, it's called the No Yolk Perfect Mocktail, and it's a savory drink that'll make you purr and knead. <laughs> So I'm gonna try it, here you go. So you take, this is different. You're gonna take a cocktail shaker, but this, <laughs> but this time you're gonna put uh, three ounces of like cranberry, raspberry, you know, drink. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the three ounces in here. Okay. Then you're going to add, um, a half ounce of uh, freshly squeezed lemon juice. One, two, three. I'm a bartender. I know how to measure. <laughs> and then you're going to do some simple syrup. You're going to do a half ounce of that. Now, here's the key, guys. You can buy the fancy simple syrup, or you could just get a pot on the stove with water and sugar. There's your simple syrup. Now, here comes the tricky part. You're going to add an egg white. And you have to shake it vigorously. La, 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 la. It's all great to me. <laughs> By what a rich man. I don't know all the songs. Okay. So I'm doing it for a long time because you're trying to create a froth. Now notice there's no ice in here. I've already taken a cocktail martini glass. And I've chilled it with ice water. And then I'm pouring this drink. That's pretty. And it has a little bit of a froth. What do you guys think? Did I make it? Yeah. So you better invite me. I'll make drinks for you guys. And then <laughs> you drink, drop in some raspberries. So at this time, raise a glass or a pretend glass of anything. 
use your pantomime skills, ladies, and let us toast <laughs> to all cats, purebreds, and mutt cats like mine, because they make us better people. Cheers, kitties. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> We got about a minute left, so I quickly want to thank the Cat Fancier Association for presenting Meowie Hour. Our cool two sponsors, Kitty Raid, the makers of isotonic drinks, and Meowie Wana, who makes organic catnip toys. Great, great people. I want to thank my, my co host, Kathy Black, and our doggy designee, Destiny. Um, Rusty's sleeping. Casey's here. Um, and of course, our three wonderful people from letsbesmart.org. We're talking Julie and Mika and Amber. And uh, I hope you had a good time today. We did. And it was our first pajama yeah, party. Yeah. Our first cat pajama party. You're yeah, the cat, first cat yeah. pajama party. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Meowie Wana, next week, back is our special guest, uh, from the Iwana, and that's Geraldine Chada, and it's going to have a cat Valentine's Day theme. What do you guys think? Love I is may have to wear my sexy red lingerie again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so until next time, same cat time, same cat channel. We'll see you on Meowie Hour. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here. We really enjoyed it. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.